For every travel enthusiast, Venice, often hailed as the most beautiful city in the world, is a must-visit bucket list destination. But I have some bad news. Did you know this city is sinking at a rate of 1 to 2 millimeters per year? At this pace, in just 20 years, it could sink by an additional 80 millimeters relative to sea level. Now, that's alarming. Few destinations around the world are as grand or unique as Venice, with its maze of canals, historic buildings, and unique charm. This enchanting city faces a dire future due to rising sea levels and sinking foundations. Maybe it's time to call it one of the most magical cities on the planet. Not the floating city, but the sinking city. But why is this happening? And what solutions have been proposed to save the most beautiful city in the world? Venice is a mesmerizing marvel. Imagine a city built on about 120 islands, interconnected by 177 canals and nearly 400 bridges. It's a watery maze filled with narrow footpaths, charming squares, hidden museums, and centuries-old churches that tell tales of the past. But there's trouble in paradise. La Serenissima, as Venice is fondly called, is in serious danger. Without urgent action, the city's future is at stake. This isn't an exaggeration. Venice faces the very real threat of being swallowed by the sea. Experts warn that by 2100, Venice could be completely submerged. Buildings are sinking, boat wakes are causing damage, and the influx of tourists is overwhelming. Meanwhile, the local population keeps dwindling. Remember November 2019? Venice was hit by its second worst flood in almost a century. The world watched in awe as St. Mark's Square, one of the city's lowest and most iconic spots, was covered in water. The tide reached a staggering 6.1 feet above sea level, leaving over 80% of Venice underwater. The damage was catastrophic, estimated at a billion euros. Mayor Luigi Brugnaro declared a state of emergency, capturing the world's attention with his urgent call for help. But what about the worst flood in Venice's history? That devastating event happened in 1966 with water levels rising to a staggering 194 centimeters above sea level. This devastating event seriously damaged around three quarters of the city's shops, businesses, and studios. Fast forward over 50 years, and it's clear that Venice's battle with the water is far from over. Recent trends are alarming. Since 1923, when water level records began, levels of 150 centimeters or more have been reached only 10 times. Shockingly, five of these instances have occurred in the last three years alone. This isn't just a fluke, it's a sign of what's to come. A 2021 report titled Sea Level Rise in Venice, Historic and Future Trends paints a sobering picture. Even if we manage to keep global temperatures from rising more than 2 degrees above pre-industrial levels, Venice's sea level could still rise by 32 centimeters by 2100. If temperatures spike by 4 degrees Celsius due to dramatic ice sheet melting, the sea level could rise by a daunting 180 centimeters, like the disastrous 2019 flood levels. But it's not just rising sea levels that threaten Venice. The city itself is sinking. Venice's buildings stand on a unique foundation, long timber piles driven deep into the lagoon's mud and clay. The bedrock lies far below this, so the piles rest on a compressed clay layer which, while more substantial than the loose mud, is still vulnerable. Over centuries, many buildings have shifted and started to sink into the lagoon. Historical groundwater extraction has made this worse, causing Venice to sink by about 15 centimeters in the past century. However, there's hope. Engineers and scientists are working tirelessly on solutions to stop Venice from sinking further. It's a tough battle, but innovative approaches are being explored to help preserve this iconic city for future generations. And where does the hope lie? One of the most ambitious and well-known efforts to protect Venice from flooding is the Mose Project, expected to be fully operational by 2025. This project has been anything but straightforward. Conceived in 1992, Moses faced numerous delays and skyrocketing costs. Construction began in 2003, with an initial completion target of 2011. But as we can see, the journey has been troubled with challenges and setbacks, pushing the project's completion date further into the future. Mose features 78 mobile barriers, each 20 meters wide, situated at three inlets. These barriers are designed to separate the Venetian Lagoon from the Adriatic Sea. When tides rise to dangerous levels, the barriers will inflate with compressed air, 
blocking the entrance channels and preventing floodwaters from swamping the city. However, this project comes with a hefty price tag. Initially budgeted at around $4.7 billion, the cost has ballooned to approximately $8 billion. Additionally, according to officials, each time the barriers are raised, it could cost an estimated $323,000. Despite these challenges, Mose offers a glimmer of hope for Venice's future. However, Mose is not a complete solution. It's designed to tackle major water level rises, but won't stop flooding in extremely low-lying areas like St. Mark's Basilica. The barriers are only raised when water levels hit 110 centimeters, but St. Mark's floods at around 90 centimeters. Raising the gates too often could also spell trouble for the lagoon. Fabio Carrera, a professor at Worcester Polytechnic Institute and founder of the Venice Project Center, warns that frequent barrier closures could trap sewage in the lagoon, creating a nasty and potentially destructive situation for the ecosystem. Carrera believes Mose is a temporary fix, effective for perhaps 100 years. In the long run, he suggests a Dutch-style solution might be necessary. The Delta Project in the Netherlands is a massive flood management system with 13 dams, numerous dikes, barriers, and sluices. Operating since 1997, it's so effective that the protected region is expected to flood only once every 4,000 years, according to the Water Snood Museum, a Dutch museum dedicated to flooding. Carrera believes that a similar construction to the Delta Project could minimize flood risk in Venice, but it's no quick fix. The Delta Project took nearly 50 years to complete, cost about $7 billion, and is incredibly intricate. Its dams stretch for 18 and a half miles, making it roughly 18 times larger than Mose. Given it took 40 years to get Mose up and running, we need to think far into the future, Carrera says. We need to be seeking those ultimate solutions right now. But rising seas and flooding aren't Venice's only water-related problems. Water is both Venice's most outstanding attraction and its most significant foe. The city, surrounded by and built upon water, is an ideal port and a magnet for millions of tourists annually. However, this unique quality also brings challenges. Mato Ondoso, which translates to swell, describes the wake created by motorboats. This swell has caused wave-related water damage to 60% of the buildings lining the Grand Canal. So how does this impact the city's already fragile infrastructure? Such damage compounds flooding, weakening buildings and the city's stone foundations, and escalating maintenance costs. The very water that makes Venice enchanting is also its most persistent threat. Venice desperately needs local solutions to its problems. However, giving locals the space and finances to develop these solutions is challenging in a city overwhelmed by tourists. In 2019, around 5.5 million tourists visited Venice. That's 100 times the city's population of 55,000. To put it into perspective, similar numbers visited much larger cities like Madrid and Moscow, with populations of 6.7 million and 12.6 million respectively. On peak summer days, tourists can outnumber locals by a ratio of 2 to 1. And this overwhelming tourism brings significant challenges. The economy's over-reliance on tourism, the extensive damage to local infrastructure, and the brain drain are all critical concerns. While tourism boosts the hospitality sector, it's not as beneficial for other industries. Brain drain, where educated people leave searching for better opportunities, is a significant problem. For those with career interests outside of tourism, better prospects often lie elsewhere. Carrera suggests that this exodus is accelerating Venice's decline by pulling away the very people needed to solve its issues. Every city and country has its own hurdles to overcome, and this requires bespoke solutions created by the people who know those areas intimately, he says. Venice needs its brightest minds to stay and innovate, not leave. And while retaining talent is essential, so too are the engineering efforts to combat the city's sinking. Despite these efforts, Venice still faces significant challenges in its battle against subsidence. The fate of Venice is truly up in the air. Engineering solutions are crucial, but they must fit into a bigger plan that tackles all the factors that make the city sink. Saving Venice isn't just about keeping a city afloat, it's about protecting a one-of-a-kind cultural and historical gem. Engineers, scientists, policymakers, and residents must keep working together to find sustainable and effective solutions. So will Venice adapt and survive, or are we witnessing the gradual loss of a global treasure? What do you think? Can Venice be safe through human ingenuity and determination, or is its fate already sealed? Could you have ideas that you would propose to help preserve the most beautiful city in the world? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this video intriguing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more fascinating insights.